Well, welcome everybody to the Intergovernmental Affairs Committee special meeting, Monday, January 25th, 2021. We'll start with the call to order. Robin Denson, City Council. Tracy Markless, City Council. Ooh. Can you hear me? I couldn't hear anybody. I have my computer on mute. Oh, I, we can hear you, Tracy. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, and we also have Josh Stecker from the city, Dale Learn, um, Josh Weiss, Bob Larson, city administrator, and Chief Busey and Annika Vaughn. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Okay, first, we're going to approve minutes from November 23rd and January 6th. Do we have a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. Okay, thank you. We'll move next to discussion item number one, which is the 2021 legislative agenda update. And Josh Weiss, I assume that's you? Sure, yeah. And I know um, Mr. Lauren can talk about federal events too, whenever you're ready. I, sorry, I don't have the uh, agenda in front of me, but um, I'm happy to go first if you'd like. Whatever you guys prefer. Go ahead, Josh. Okay, all right. Um, Hi everybody, nice to see you. We're definitely virtual legislative session is underway and I've got a hearing on on my other monitor as well. Uh, it's been a lot of that multitasking the last couple of weeks. Um, we're definitely learning how to do this. Um, we're about three weeks away from the first legislative cutoff when any new bills introduced will be considered not, uh, not viable for action or any bills that haven't moved out of committee. Um, so that'll be a good thing. We're not seeing as many bills this year. They're definitely holding back, but there's still plenty of issues to look at. I think um, we sent our weekly report to you over the weekend. I think the big things to update you on are just this morning. Um, actually, Annika, working with Jeff Langhelm, got our, our um, capital budget request for the sports complex submitted into the electronic uh, system. So that's great to have done. Um, probably more to talk about on transportation than that. Uh, they're in the process of working out the capital budget. They, we've been hearing that they're gonna be trying to get agreement on the capital budget earlier in the process, maybe then, then later. Um, on transportation, we saw last week, the House Democrats came out with a, a new transportation revenue package. It, it did not include um, any local projects. Um, they essentially plan at this point to negotiate out what those projects are. I think the chair has been really blunt about the idea that, you know, those projects are probably what they're going to need to use to entice members to vote for this package. Um, it is pretty significant in terms of an 18 cent gas tax increase. It has a carbon fee in there as well. And they do anticipate on top of that passing the um, low carbon fuel standard bill, which is a separate bill, but would is largely believed to raise gas prices as well. So it's a pretty big impact to the consumers. I don't anticipate any Republican support at all for it. That was my question, actually, Josh, given our representatives, is anybody gonna, are we, do we have any shot at any of our transportation packages this year? Um, I think we have a shot. I, I just backing up from the House Democrats proposal, um, the Senate is going to put a proposal on the table as well. Um, we're hearing that'll be, it's going to be heard on Thursday of this week. Um, and I, I think from the big picture, there's a really big debate going on among between the Senate um, on one side, who wants to do a carbon tax and then, I'm sorry, cap and, yeah, carbon tax. <laughs> And then the House Democrats and the governor that want to do a cap and trade system. Um, they need to really get figured out what their revenue source is going to be, how they're going to deal with carbon um, in broad terms before really they even figure out any details about funding levels or projects. Um, I think basically the, the Democratic proposal, it, doesn't, it does not bond any of that revenue. So they don't need any Republican votes to pass their proposal. Some see that as a benefit, some see it as a, as a negative. Um, the proposal that the Senate has put out in the past and will again put out, I'm sure will require bonding um, and does need to be more bipartisan. So, you know, we are in the position now um, 
both with the House package that doesn't have any projects and then with the Senate package, whether it includes our projects like it has in the past or doesn't, we just need to keep, go, keep going forward at every opportunity and talking about the projects that we wanna get funded. Um, kind of the bigger mechanics of this aren't gonna get figured out for a while and they're way above, way above our pay grade. <laughs> Um, hey Josh, is there anything that council should be doing to reach out to legislators, not only our own, because I think that they all know and want these projects to happen, but other legislators that we could, what could we do? I think for the time being, um, and uh, Mayor Kuhn and Mr. Larson and I have been emailing today about this. Um, this Thursday's hearing on the Senate proposal, I do think it, it's important to have the city represented. I think the mayor is, is going to do that, is my understanding at this point, to show up to the hearing and testify, mention our projects. Um, we'll tailor that. The, in the past, they've been in the Senate proposal, so we're assuming they will be again. Um, and we'll just say thank you, very similar to what Councilmember Himes did last year on behalf of the city. So that's our first step. And at this point, we don't need to look too much further beyond that first step. Um, and you'll help prepare that if, if that, okay, thank you. Yep, absolutely. We'll have talking points for you. And the way testimony has been going, it's even shorter than when it's in, in live. So you'll have about a minute or two to, to make that case. And we'll easily, we'll easily make that. Well, that's when Zoom is handy. Uh, when I did it for two minutes, I was there three and a half hours. So for two minutes, so. Yeah. Yeah. The Zoom, I can get other projects done. So I like that. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, and we'll just, um, Council Member Denson, we'll keep you posted on other opportunities. At, at this point, you know, our delegation is well aware. They're, they need to be the ones advocating within their caucuses for our project. And I'm confident that they're doing that for the time being. So we'll keep you posted on transportation. I'm going to move on unless there's more transportation discussion. Okay, the, the other piece I know that you all want to talk about um, and is on your legislative agenda is the multifamily tax exemption bill. Uh, Senator Doss um, put out Senate Bill 5287. I forwarded it earlier and I know um, uh, Ms. Knudsen had a chance to review it and provide some feedback. I subsequently have had a chance to connect with all the other city lobbyists that have been working on this issue. And this is a bill that comes out of a long stakeholder process all summer long where Senator Doss and other legislators had stakeholders talking about what they wanted out of a multifamily tax exemption program. This bill pops out. And I think the bottom line is that most cities are feeling like it doesn't do anywhere close to what they had asked for. Um, AWC and others are gonna testify and sign in in opposition to it at this point. Um, I think there's probably the, the feeling that that very well could end the conversation for this session. Um, but I don't think anybody likes this bill enough to feel like that's a bad thing. Um, I can go into the details of that if you'd like. Um, I think, you know, from Gig Harbor's perspective, I've been at the table really saying, you know, make this program something that one opens up eligibility for for cities of Gig Harbor size, and two make it simple enough that it can actually be administered by small cities. And while I do open it up for cities of your size, it is administratively so burdensome and bureaucratic that I would really be surprised if Gig Harbor would be interested in trying to implement it. It includes density requirements, you would have to rezone areas where you offered the um, tax exemption and increase density in those areas. Um, you would have to do affordability analysis uh, for offering it. Um, and you would have to, um, you could have an off ramp from the affordability requirements. If you were offering an eight year program, you would still have to require that some of those units were affordable unless you could show that you had a vacancy rate below one and a half percent. And, you know, we've talked a little bit before those vacancy rates can be a little bit hard to prove up. So I guess the, the bottom line is um, nobody's in love with this bill. I think it's been, it's been heard tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. Um, you or I could testify if you really want to make that point. I think there's going to be a lot of cities that are um, weighing in. 
on this issue and, and, and developers, I will say. Um, so it's really, I think, at your discretion. I'm not sure that we lose anything by not weighing in um, verbally on it. Otherwise, I would sign in opposed to it at this point. I agree with uh, Katrina Knutson's concerns regarding, which I know, I think she may have only sent it to me because I sit on the planning and building committee as well as this committee, but it does, it does, you know, her concerns about having to rezone just for where this credit would be used and because um, it has to meet 15 um, dwelling units per acre as a minimum. And by choosing that just one zone, not only would we limit the use of the program, but setting density like that, it kind of artificially sets a density that we may not want rather than letting the market do that. Um, Cause Gig Harbor doesn't allow 15 dwelling units in an acre currently. So we'd have, to, and, and I think when you change zoning, you can't just change it in one area you have to like you change something for one you have to change it for the whole city kind of a thing and i know that that i don't think that would be supported by the council and i certainly don't think i and well i know it's not supported by our community community development department so i i wasn't super thrilled with how this bill turned out either and reading the details of it and then when when Katrina shared her concerns, I was glad to know I wasn't alone <laughs> in those because that was the first thing that stuck out to me was the, the density requirements. And I was like, eh, I don't think that's gonna fly with, with the city. And as far as how we wanna be able to control, local control over density and growth and stuff like that, I don't think that that would, um, I don't, I, I'm kind of glad that other cities are sort of seeing the same thing and, and in agreement with that. Maybe there's another bill that can be written better later if, if we like, maybe someone else can bring this back maybe for next year's legislative session and have a bill that makes more sense and have other cities maybe weigh in before the bill is written to try to get it, get it more fine tuned to what smaller cities would be looking for out of this multifamily tax credit. So that's, that's my two cents. I don't know how council members Rodenberg and Denson feel about it, but I, I feel like, I don't, I don't know that we would need to testify if the majority of cities are going to be against this anyway, and you don't think it's going to pass, then we wouldn't really have to. Plus, even if it passed, we still have a choice whether we use it or not, right? Like we're not forced to use it. So I don't think spending time testifying on this particular one is necessary, but that's just, that's my opinion, so. I don't see any disagreement, so. <laughs> Mayor, are you? I, I agree with everything Tracy said, Councilmember Mark Lee yeah. said. Okay. Sounds good. I'll keep you posted, you know, if this bill does somehow keep moving along and gets amended, I'll, I'll be in touch with the changes, so I'll let you know. I think the last thing I really wanted to let you know about was the Open Public Meetings Act flexibility bill for emergency use. And we talked about that before and weighed in in support of it. It's actually was one of the very first bills to be passed by the House. Um, they passed it last Friday, so it's over in the Senate now. And that's a very good sign. I think this bill will continue moving forward. So we'll be looking for ways to support that in the Senate. We provided detail in our report, our written report on um, the Democrats expenditure plan for um, the federal dollars that are coming down. Um, there's a good amount of money there for business relief and public health response and education um, response as well. So that we expect will get passed relatively soon as well. Other than that, I'm just happy to answer questions. There's a whole bill list here. We can talk about any of those or any other issues you're hearing about. Chief Busey, did you have a question or comment? I did. Uh, good afternoon, Josh. And I know it's not on the city's legislative agenda, but it might be for some of your other clients. Um, House Bill 1202, which removes the qualified immunity for police officers, uh, makes it much easier to sue law enforcement officers and their employers. Do you have a sense for if that's got enough traction to move forward or what? Boy, that's a great question. I know local governments are really rallying in opposition to this one because it is such a big liability increase for them. I would normally say that they would have the, the strength when united to stop it. 
in this current environment, you know probably better than me, this whole police accountability effort, um, if it catches, catches fire um, because of that effort, it could, it could move. Um, it is certainly one of the more extreme proposals we've seen this year. Um, hope, hopefully not. Um, I think from just a general government perspective, this is one of the more potentially damaging ones. Okay, thank you. Okay, then we will move on to Mr. Learn for federal issues. Yeah, so I'll, I'll try to be short, um, sort of give you a very quick update on where we are federally and then kind of go into, you know, where we are on our, our um, the scope of our contract, which is primarily seeking uh, some grant funding. So as you know, five days ago, we inaugurated the 46th president of the United States. Um, in hours later, the two, the, the two new senators from Georgia were sworn in, but therefore giving the power of the majority to the Democrats in the United States Senate via the tie vote by the new vice president. So the first time in a long time, we have one party rule in, in DC. Uh, whether you like that or not, it does tend to allow for things to move more smooth. Now, the Senate does have some 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 powers, and they're currently trying to come together on a power sharing um, resolution. The last time this happened, where a tie vote was the vice president, it was in 2001, and I actually worked in the U.S. Senate, and they did have a pretty good working relationship there, and had had one come together. The now minority leaders rejected that uh exact um power sharing agreement so but we anticipate that's more posturing and we will see probably this week latest next week a power sharing agreement between the two parties in the senate so things will begin to move uh um rather quickly uh the senate is moving on nominations for the new president um, the budget will be delayed. Normally it comes the first week of February, but likely in March because of a new administration. Um, the delegation, our delegation members, uh, I would say increased substantially in their, uh, their power over federal, federal, federal government with Senator Murray now the assistant majority leader of the Senate um, and chair of the Health, Education, Labor and Pensions Committee and number two on Senator Propes. Um, Senator Cantwell is now the chair of the Commerce Committee, which has jurisdiction over parts of transportation, telecommunications, maritime issues. She's always been an advocate of those, of course. And then Derek Kilmer maintains a seat on appropriations. Um, so for the first 100 days, we'll see a lot of activity. The president wants to move on an additional COVID relief bill. And then probably in, in line with his budget request in March, a comprehensive infrastructure stimulus build, somewhat like we saw in, in 2009 under the uh, um, beginning of the Obama administration. So should be interesting. A lot of the people are talking about it and what, will, what that will mean. And you can certainly ask me any questions about it. As far as for uh, us, I sent around, uh, we did pass the 2001, I'm sorry, the 2021 budget on December 27th for the entire federal government which brings all that federal uh, funding that we normally see for the various departments. Um, and I sent around uh, an analysis of the build transportation infrastructure grants. Um, and typically the, the Department of Transportation has 120 days to, to send out a notice of available funding and then you have three months to then apply. Um, they have said now that with the change in administration that they'll may stall that a little so we could probably more likely see that in in late spring um but we will see it i expect that to and and overall with the new administration and democratic administration um a lot of the infrastructure issues will begin to sort of push its push its way towards a more green infrastructure more more environmentally um, sustainable sustainability issues will be a big issue. I think certainly a big factor and a priority in any grant on the infrastructure side. Uh, it's normally not an issue in the Pacific Northwest. So I, I see that that'll, that's helpful for places like Gig Harbor. So again, the NOFO, I know that folks are looking at it and that um, 
and is coming up with a list of a, so maybe a few uh, possible projects. Um, I did also send around with that email uh, a list of the winners from the prior year. I, I can send more uh, lists of those of those winners, but they range from all different types of infrastructure and entities of all different sizes. So there was some planning money in this in this uh, appropriations as well for build. Um, then I've also will have a strategy uh, on EDA. Uh, uh, President Biden, Economic Development Administration. We've we've sort of talked about it in the past, and with us taking charge of that, why we'll have a strategy for seeking those funds. Um, President Biden has sought in his COVID response, his first COVID response bill as president, some additional funds for EDA. So that's potentially helpful. Um, and then the state plan to back up the maritime heritage is, is close to being developed and that may uh, provide some opportunities. And then also finally, um, my coworker, Paul Hoover, I'm gonna bring in a little bit more um, on, on grant issues. He's, he's quite effective on these and, and maybe next time I'll have him, him speak as well. Uh, many people here know him, but I'll bring him in a little bit more on, on, on broadening. I know our contract says three to five or so, or maybe, it, maybe we've talked about that of, of, of possibilities we'll seek in this calendar year. That's all I have, any questions? I had a question for um, either the mayor or Mr. Larson. Have we begun to develop a list of potential projects for these transportation build grants or how, how does that happen? Well, you know, one thing I'll say, when we have our retreat Wednesday, we will be going over with council um, the amount of projects that we have and what council seems that we can go after. Um, and with that, I'll just let Bob add to that. We're, uh, yeah, we're gonna lean heavily, if you will, on, uh, on Dale and his staff, but to come up with some suggestions, we're gonna have to take a look at those and see what might be viable according to our projects that we have out there right now. And uh, I, I won't know that until we see what's coming out of, out of the feds. And uh, I think we can start matching up a few of our projects, especially the ones that we would look at as our priorities. It's uh, quite possible we can get some, you know, perhaps some matching money for some of the, for some of the roads that we have that might be connected into, for instance, uh, SR 16. And then uh, we'll also work on other projects too that might have some federal implications. So we're gonna have to be qualified and there's only certain types of roadways that actually qualify for these, some of these federal grants. And I, I obviously don't have a lot of detail there. Dale knows more about it than I do, but I do know you have to have some, some nexus there with the, with the road systems that you do have. They have to be connecting into, for instance, a, you know, another, another major highway system or some type of a arterial route of some sort to help carry, carry uh, vehicles and, and trucks and so on and so forth. So we'll have to wait and see what they've got coming there. Dale, would, would that match up with what you, some of your thoughts had been? We, we talked about it previously. I, I can send more lists, but I, I would suggest the I did attach the the 2020 winners, the the awards that were were let. Um, and you know you don't have to read every one, but just thumb through it. Um, I can also highlight a few uh, that I think are are relevant, um, and then I can send a few others as well. I've done that in the past, but I can do that just to give you a feel for what type of things. And now. A new administration could be quite different. And again, I suspect that this administration will look towards projects that, and, I, and it, it sounds very broad and I apologize, but a more green. Um, so ones that have, and we're not, we, we generally don't have a problem in the Northwest with that. That's, there are other places in the country that, that don't have much of an, envi of an environmental sustainability plan in anything whatsoever. So um, I don't think that'll be an issue, but I, Again, it just thumbing through, it does, uh, uh, Bob, it does typically, you have to be on the national highway system. And it, so you have to have basically something that attaches or impacts the national highway system and 16 does. So yeah. just to give you an example. Council member Rodenberg. Yeah, I had a, a question, something I've always wondered about given uh, the amount of government property out on the Kitsap Peninsula and the Olympic Peninsula specifically, all the naval bases. Is there any advantage to Gig Harbor and uh, Route 16 since it's the main way out there? Is, is there any play there that there's the, about the government base? 
Yeah, there's two things, uh, uh, council member. There's number one, um, when you make a, a, a grant application, making those types in your narrative, having a, a, an attachment or an impact on a strategic uh, military uh, installation is helpful, number one. Um, and what that impact, knowing what that impact is and, and, and making the argument that any um, upgrade or, or improvement on, on um, a roadway that, that is a thoroughfare through in and out or around or, or associated with a, a, a military installation is very helpful. Um, I-5 got, and again, obviously that's Fort Lewis, but I-5 got a major grant uh, through that major, the Fort Apologize for that in our she, she closed it. We should be able to open it back up again. Like, how that happened? Before. She apologized profusely. I said it's okay. So. She's new on the job. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's an old hand now at uh, technology. Lee, we can't see you. Here we go. I'll tell the mail, mayor check back in too here. Hmm. Hopefully Tracy's trying to get back on. Okay, there she is. Perfect. Okay. Dale, were you speaking when we got cut off? Yes. Okay. Yeah, just, <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. Um, just, uh, yeah, on, on the defense side, that those types of impacts are great narratives and helps a project be much more competitive and that there was one in, on I-5 through Fort Lewis that got a large chunk of federal money because of that. And then a couple of years ago, the uh, Adam Smith, Congressman Adam Smith used to represent the city before redistricting um, years ago was, uh, uh, no, no, yes. Uh, he, um, as chairman of the Armed Services Committee, it, it created a new program called the Defense Communities uh, Infrastructure Program, which is a smaller program that, that if you, had, if, you, if you qualify um, under the Economic Adjustment uh, uh, Office of the Department of Defense, you can apply for, for some funds. It's only, they've only done it once. So I can, we can look into that as well, but we, I'd have to know more about that impact of 16 with, with, um, with Bremerton in those areas. And, and we can talk about it another time. But I, the things previously on it say, just, just talking about build, I mean, the jobs are always number one, job impacts, freight, uh, mobility have always been, some on safety, safety is probably number two. Um, although the department will always say safety is number one, it's usually economic uh, impact, it's two, number one in reality. But again, I'll look back to what they did in the Obama administration when it comes to environmental um, um, benefits because that, that I think will be more important than, and then they're, they're saying it already with the Secret Department of, Sec Department of Transportation Secretary nominee, Mayor Buttigieg was in commerce uh, a couple of days or last week. And he indicated that, that you know, environmental impacts and environmental sustainability is gonna be big in the transportation area. So I'll look to see what they used to do and sort of the impacts and sort of the ideas that, that people came up with. The, the ones that they favored in in, in those those um, factors as well. Okay, thank you. Oh, Mr. Larson. I just wanted to add from earlier that uh, Jeff uh, and Langhelm and his staff are tracking closely on these projects as well. I sent everything that we were getting from uh, Dale and his staff. So I just want to assure uh, mayor and council members and members of the committee that uh, we're, we're doing that as well and looking for these projects. So. 
Wonderful. Okay. Was there anything else? That was the only agenda item. Oh, um, Council Member Rodenberg. I have, I have two things. Um, Bob, you, uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Larson, you said that uh, Jeff is working on this as well and that there's been some communications uh, <clears throat> with uh, Gordon Thomas Honeywell. Uh, since we're the Intergovernmental Affairs Committee, I'd like to request that we're copied on a lot of that so we uh, have first-hand real-time knowledge. Yeah. I will be, I'll, I'll be happy to have that done as soon as, as soon as we come up with some projects and Jeff starts looking at those. Right now, okay. he just was looking at uh, looking at the stuff that Dale had sent that you had seen already about uh, how we're going to set this whole thing up. And, and secondly, uh, a question for Mr. Weiss uh, in regard to Chief Busey's comment. Uh, given the potential for lawsuits, uh, not only against our officers, but the city, uh, when that bill comes up, if there's anything uh, that the city can do, uh, I would be appreciative to let us know because that could be uh, financially devastating at, for not only the city, but we also need to protect our officers as well. Yeah, uh, so I was actually just thinking that, that we didn't quite come around to a decision about whether you wanted me to do anything. It is being heard this week. I cannot tell you off the top of my head or find in my calendar where it is. Um, but I would be, you know, happy to be very easy to sign you in on that, uh, in opposition to that measure too. You could testify, I think, um, unless you have some really specific examples or specific information, I think I would recommend against that at this point. I, I have one example of how crazy that bill is, if it's of interest to you. Sure. And that if we have an officer who breaks policy or does something illegal and we try to fire him, uh, and they go to arbitration and appeal and get their job reinstated, that opens the door to anybody injured by that officer's actions to not only sue them, but sue us for um, negligent retention of the employee. And we've already made the case for them. We could just hand over our packet of materials we used in the arbitration hearing to be used against us. So that's it, that particular legislation is lunacy. The hearing is tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. I, I may very well likely sign up. I'm going to be sitting on a WASPIC uh, update here in just a few minutes too. So, okay. So, would you like me to sign the city in? Would you? Um... I, I could probably do that. I, okay. More to follow. I want to hear what WASPIC has to say. Okay, sounds good. I had a question, uh, Mr. Weiss, on it's. I guess it's now Senate Bill five one one zero regarding the regarding telecommunications companies. Do you know, um, just in the brief summary that they have, um, it, it removes their tower height requirements, it removes exemptions for placing moratoriums on the processing of their applications. It, it, it seems like it's really meant to fast track small wireless and any other kind of telecommunications towers. And it seems like it like it's going to mandate local governments to do a lot more than even some of the FCC requirements that have been placed on local governments. Do you know um, when this one is going to be heard or if it's already been heard? Because we may want to really dig into this one and have some city testimony on this one since we've the council has made it um, known a couple times about our our opinion of towers going up everywhere in our city. Yeah, it was heard last Thursday. Um, what we're hearing is that it's unlikely to move. Okay. Um, I think your assessment is accurate about the impact to cities. Um, we have been told that it was a courtesy hearing only. Um, if it does end up moving out of committee, we can activate on that. Thank you. I, I would appreciate that. Um, and then my next question was on House Bill 1189. Um, the tax increment financing. I don't I don't know if you explained that before what what that means. Um, 
I can't remember if you explain. I, I've gotten so lost in all these bills that I'm trying to keep track of which one is which. Um, but this one also seems to do some things we may not like as, or the planning department may not like in terms of uh, increasing fees for permitting and things like that. It, it, it may affect our constituents in the in regarding fees. I was trying to see if I could find a summary of the bill instead of trying to read the whole thing. Um, let me go back and see if there's a summary instead of. There's a bill report now on the bill. Okay. Um, oh, I just saw that. Oh, awesome. Uh, it actually has a really good fact sheet on this. I'll send it in the chat and you can take a look. It's it's Thank less you. confusing than bill summary language, I think. So I'll send that along. Yeah, because it's 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 authorizing local governments to designate tax increment financing areas and to use increased local property tax collections to fund public improvements. But that I just want to make sure we're 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 watching what that's going to do to our citizens and the amount in the in the arena of property taxes um, that that doesn't get hijacked somehow and rate and and really like hurt seniors and people on fixed incomes and things like that yeah that's a great question we did talk about this i'm sure i did not explain it very well because it's a <laughs> it's a weird it's a difficult uh, concept yeah. um it was i mean i think the first thing is and the summary really does do a good job of this but the first thing is it's a local option so you're citizen taxpayers, at least in its current form, wouldn't be impacted at all unless you decided to do something locally. Um, the idea is that you would um, allow infrastructure to be built. It, it would allow you to build infrastructure and pay for that infrastructure by essentially bonding against the value. The, the new property tax value in that district, the idea being that that infrastructure is going to raise the property tax value greater than it would without the infrastructure, that increment of greater value that you can then bond against to pay for the infrastructure. Okay. So um, property taxes would not necessarily go up. In fact, if your overall values, right, given rate-based or uh, budget-based property taxes, overall values would increase in that just across the city that would get spread out amongst all the taxpayers. Um, it actually should make it, for, for most taxpayers, should decrease their property taxes. But it's worth looking at and we'll definitely keep tracking it. And it is supported by cities and AWC and developers and um, realtors. It's seen as a infrastructure development program that doesn't cost the state anything out of their general fund. Okay, that's what I wanted to kind of get to. Thank you was was yeah. what kind of support and who is supporting it and why. So that's that makes that makes more sense. I think I might have just read parts of it wrong and got a little concerned about it's just seems like a tricky like tricky <laughs> language in there. So <laughs> so I'm like I just need some clarification because it's it, it just seemed very confusing in, in, in parts of it. So yeah, it's I appreciate horribly... the explanation. And thank you, on Annika. I don't know, did you put that? I don't know if I can even get into the- I think I can send chats, but I emailed it to everyone. Oh, thank you. Because yeah. I don't see a chat function in here. So um, yeah, at least not on my screen. I don't, is there one and I'm just missing it? <laughs> I don't have one either. So yeah. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> Oh my god. Every time I think I have Zoom figured out, then some new thing. All right. Thank you very much, you guys, for that. I, I appreciate your all your work on this. Thank you, Councilmember Markley, for bringing up those two bills. That was of interest to everybody, I think. Um, anybody else have any questions? Mayor Kuhn? You good? All right. Then I will take a um, motion to adjourn. I make a motion we adjourn the meeting. Second. <laughs> All right, we are adjourned. Oh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> we'll see you guys in a few minutes. <laughs> yeah.